day listener, my name is Alamele Konshikeko. I will be taking you physics tutorial as regards the Senior Secondary School Scheme, SS1. Now, before we start, I would like to first of all introduce physics as regards the importance of physics and also the prospects of physics. When I say prospect, what are the job opportunities available in physics? So, before then, we we'll also like to, I mean, after then, we'll be looking at, okay, what are the schemes, what are the topics under the Senior Secondary School Physics SS1. Now, let's, let's get it started. Under the importance of physics, we all know that physics plays an important role in economic development, also in education, energy, and the environment. Now, when it comes to physics, one of the importance which um, physics has actually done, or one of, one of the things physics has actually done in terms of inversions are one, they have the transistor. Transistors are actually being, uh, exist in so many phenomena. When it comes to the transistor radio, when it also comes to some gadget that exists as per where transistor truly takes effect. Now from the diagram, you'll be able to see the images of transistors, how and the equipment where they are being found. The second invention physics are actually brought to life is the laser and the laser diodes. That's another very good um, invention of physicists. People that invented these are physicists. There are so many, there are so many in number. If I start recording them, we won't get out of it. Now, the third one is a digital computer. Computer is what everybody uses now. It's, a, it's, it's also an invention of physics. The fourth one, we have the fiber optics. Why the fifth one, we have the global positioning system. These are the actual or the real important. These are the things physics has actually brought to us. And we are all happy with it. Now, let's go back to the prospect of physics. Physics, as, uh, 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 as whoever that wants, actually wants to study, you don't need to get scared, you don't need to get um, disturbed as regards, okay, if I go and study physics now, what am I going to be? What course am I going to be? Or where, or where, which company am I going to work? Let me give you this. These are the job prospects. These are the job directly, directly in, in, in need of physicists. Number one. We have geophysics. Geophysics has, are found in so many organizations. They do a lot of work. The second one, we have the higher education lecturing. Go to higher institutions, you see people lecturing physics and they are well paid. Now, the third one, we have metallurgy. Metallurgy aspect. When you talk about metallurgy, we are talking about polymers. We are talking about people that dug. Um, we are talking about miners. And the fourth one, we have radiation protection practice. These are, although that particular uh, our practices has not yet been fully grounded in Nigeria. We still have it in the United States. When we talk about radiation, when we talk about things that are actually being developed when it comes to radiation. Now, the fifth aspect is the research. Research science. As a physicist, you can go into research for our institution. So many inventions that have been, that came up today, are all from research work. Now, that is, those are the prospects, those are the job opportunities that are directly in need of physicists. Now, the, the, the second aspect that I would like to bring to you are the industries that are passionately in search of physicists. Number one, we have the aerospace and defense. When I talk about aerospace, I'm talking about aircraft. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the space engineers. I'm talking about the space physicists, people that actually work in the space. Now, the second point is the energy-oriented company. We have so many companies in Nigeria for as long as they are into energy production. They will always need, they will always be in need of physics. Now, also another point, or another industry that are passionate in search of physics are the engineering aspect. We have construction companies, we have so many companies, for as long as they are engineering oriented, they will definitely need physics. Another, the fourth industry that are passionate in need of physics are the what? Oil and gas industries. We have the corner, NFPC, and Shell. Those are the companies, those are the industries that are directly in need of physics. Now, those are the uh, prospects and industries that are in need of physics. Now, now let's start fully. Under, uh, under our scheme one, as in the SS1 um, syllabus, we'll be, having, we'll be treating five major, five major um, topics, five major sections. Number one, we have interactions and matter. Interactions of matter, space, and time. Number two, we have the conservation principles. Number three, we have the fields, attracts, and emotion. 
The fourth one, we have the energy quantization and quality of matter. Why the fifth one, we have physics in technology. So in this section, we'll be starting with us in section one. We are starting with the first one, which is the interaction of matter, space, and time. We'll be looking at the first one, which says interaction of matter and space. Interaction of matter, space, and time. What do we mean? We are looking at matter as a body. We are looking at matter as a space. What is matter? We all know from our foundational knowledge of science, matter is anything that has it and occupies space. Now, we also will be looking at space itself and we'll also be looking at time and that interaction of matter, space, and time. Now, what is the first topic on that? Is we have what we call fundamental and derived units. Fundamental and derived units. What do you mean by fundamental and derived units? Now, so fundamental quantities are basic quantities that are independent of other quantities. What do I mean? These are quantities that they don't depend on other quantities. What do I mean? Quantities that can stand alone. When I say independent, quantities that don't depend on another factor for it to come into existence. Number one is the mass. The examples of fundamental quantities, we have the mass. A body that stands, look at me, I'm standing now, I do not depend on any other body for me to actually take my stand. I'm a fundamental quantity because I have a mass. We also have length. The length from A to B. Look at, when you see the length, this, you take your length A, B, you get a particular distance, let's say 10 meters. Now, this particular description, or this particular dimension which you got, is a what? Is a what? Is a fundamental quantity. Is a fundamental quantity in the sense that that particular length does not need another word, another factor for it to come into existence. Another example is your time. You have your time here, probably your work block. This is your 12, this is 1, this is 3, I mean this is 2, this is 4, this is 5, and this is 6. When you measure your time, this is 6 o'clock. The time will continuously, will continuously be what the time is. If you say this is 6 o'clock, that particular time does not need an external point for what the meaning to be what concluded. Those are examples of fundamental quantities. Now another fact we need to look at are derived quantities. What are derived quantities? Derived quantities are quantities that are obtained by simple, easy combination of fundamental quantities. What do I mean? It means that there has to be two words, two fundamental quantities. If A is a fundamental quantity F. E B is also a fundamental quantity F. Now when both come together, they will form what derived quantity. Those are the what the differences between fundamental and derived quantity. Now what are the example of derived quantity? We have your force. We have your force. Our basic knowledge in science, our foundational knowledge in science made us know that force is what? The product of mass times what? Acceleration. This mass is a what? Is a fundamental quantity. You understand? Now, our acceleration too, if you, partic if you break acceleration now, you have acceleration is velocity over what? Time. Now, this velocity can also give you what? This distance over time. So it means that distance over time can be distance over time over t. So meaning that your d can be over what? t squared. Meaning that your acceleration has two what? Fundamental quantities attached to it. So that particular thing made your what? Force. Be what? A derived quantity because it has two or three what? Fundamental quantities formed into it. Another example of what? Of derived quantity is your speed. You have speed. Speed and velocity. As we go on in this course, I will break down to you the difference between speed and what? Velocity. Although, in terms of what? English or in terms of uh, your dictionary, they might mean the same thing. But when it comes to science, and the difference between speed and velocity, but don't let us push more of our time. That is an example of what derived quantity. An example, another example of derived quantity is your prayer. Some people call it pressure, but you call it prayer. Prayer is another what example of what derived quantity. Why? Because it has a combination of what two or three fundamental quantity in it. So I believe I've done justice to the difference between fundamental and derived. So if you check now, what are the main examples of these fundamental quantities and their units? Now we, we talked about length the other time. We said length has a unit of mass. Mass too has a unit of kilogram, which is in kg. 
your time has a unit of what? Second. So you need to differentiate between when I say fundamental quantities, fundamental quantity has examples and their units. And when I say derived quantity, they also have their own example and their SI unit. Meaning that in science, for everything you need to measure, there is always an SI unit for it. If I talk about mass now, for every mass, value of mass, which I want, which I produce, I must have a unit to support it. Which means that if a body, if I'm looking at a body of 50 kg, for instance, your bag of cement. Now, if you have a bag of cement here, this bag of cement, the, the actual mass of this bag of cement is 50 kg. This kg here is a unit of that what? Mass. Meaning that this bag of cement is what? Is a mass. Why your 50 kg is the SI unit of that mass. SI means the standard international unit. In science, you say, okay, what's the SI unit of mass? You might be asked, what's the SI unit of mass? You say it's kg. You understand? What's the SI unit of Force, that's your word, your derived quantity. We say it's Newton. You understand? So, those are the examples. I mean, those are the units given to every quantity, whether it's fundamental or derived. Under the fundamental quantities, we gave some examples. We said we have the length, length is measured in meter, and that's m. We have your word mass. Your mass is measured in what? kg. 